you, 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 you are about to experience Vegas bad boys of podcasting. Fortunately, you are about to hear lots of opinions, but uh, rarely any facts. Impersonation might occur, but uh, good luck trying to figure them out this program is not intended for kids or the easily offended listener discretion is advised you have been warned you press play it's too late to stop get ready to podcast <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Welcome, welcome to another edition of Vegas Bad Boys of Podcasting. I'm your host, DJ Impact. What's that, Matt Michaels? I have no idea what's going on. You don't know what's going on? This is the part where you shake your ass and somebody in your room follows at you. Yeah. They're dancing. Are you good? I'm, I'm only hearing this when you like talk now. <laughs> it like it cut out totally, and now only hear it when it's on your end. Oh, so you didn't hear it before? No, no, we we're still hearing. We heard it. it. Still hearing it. We heard it, and okay. then it it cut out for us where we where it wasn't coming through our speakers. It was only coming through when you turned on your mic. Interesting. Well, we'll have to play around with that a little later then. Yeah. Play play around with it for Valentine's Day, okay? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell? Oh, man. Well, look, uh, welcome everybody who is tuning in. Thanks for, uh, for joining us. This is um, NXT Vengeance just uh, happened a few hours ago. So we're going to jump right into it. Before I start talking about no surrender, that also happened uh, this uh, uh, past weekend as well. So, vengeance, guys. Um, let's get to it. What is your take of the pay per view? I thought overall it was it it started off really strong. The middle was really strong. The end was pretty strong. I know the NXT Women's Title. You know it. I don't know if it, if it felt rush or that was the most that, you know, you're going to get out of having, um, you know, EO who is small going against uh, two of the other much stronger women. Um, I don't know. But what, what was your take on the overall uh, pay-per-view? And, and we can even start with that match, the NXT women's championship because out of all of them that one was probably the one I'm not saying it was a bad match but it just didn't hold at the same level as the rest of the matches that's just my opinion what do you guys think wow okay uh, I guess, um, I guess, oh, man <laughs> um I will say overall uh NXT Vengeance I gave that whole pay-per-view uh, a street score of uh, an eight. I'll be honest, an eight. Um, the end, the women's- You had an 8.5 just like an hour ago. What happened to that 0.5? Uh, uh, I'll get into that, okay? Let me get into Ooh. that. <laughs> but you didn't even say it to preference it, so people wouldn't even know that you had it. <laughs> okay, in, in the chat, in the Vegas Bad Boys of Podcasting chat, I stated at the time, 8.5. I have reduced that score to an eight and here are the reasons why. A lot of it had to do with that last match or not the last match, but the, the women's uh, title match. I felt that the end wasn't that great. I felt like that part was a little rushed. That's just my opinion. Um, I felt like that match could have ended a lot better, but it was okay. I mean, it wasn't a bad match. Um, you know, Obviously everybody knows the result. Theo Tarai is, is still the winner. Um, I was glad to see uh, Mercedes Martinez, um, you know, in the picture. I felt like she landed well to that match. Obviously, Tony Storm looked amazing as usual. Um, and I was really, 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 really digging the, the promos that they were doing. 
um, with a lot of that, especially throughout the whole night. Um, outside of that, highlights for me was uh, obviously uh, MSK winning uh, the, the Dusty Tag Team uh, Tag Cup Classics. That was a, that was big. It was a great match. I mean, uh, there were other matches, but I won't I won't steal all of the spotlight on that. Really good. And uh, Cameron Grimes to the moon. Uh, loving the new uh, Beverly Hill Hillbillies uh, spot. If you watched NXT on Wednesday, he came out and says, Mr. Regal can't tell me nothing. Can't. And he was handing out real $100 bills. I was looking. I pressed pause. I was like, is that a $100 bill? But I ain't gonna lie. He, 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 was, he was playing like, uh, like, like little Bow Wow in his videos where he got like a couple hundreds and then there was like a whole bunch of ones and maybe some fake money wrapped up in there. But, but he, in real life, I heard he really balling. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, supposedly he bought up a lot of the AMC, AMC and GameStop stock. Um, obviously, if you have been living under a rock, there was uh, a little bit of uh, chicanery that went down with the Wall Street Bets subreddit. Um, long story short, they manipulated the stock market and uh, drove the price of certain dead stocks like AMC and GameStop through the roof uh, or to the moon, if you will. <laughs> and uh, Cameron Grimes is one of those people that actually benefited from this. Um, there were jokes being made supposedly backstage that uh, he was he was the richest man in NXT um, based off of this, uh, this, this cryptocurrency. He was involved with some crypto stuff too but uh, also with the stock market. So it's awesome that they took a real life incident, something uh, that's timely and, and, and legitimately happened to him and incorporated it into an angle. Hey, uh, Sin City Steve, would you say that what Cameron Grimes did was shock the system of Wall Street? Uh, without a doubt, man. <laughs> I, and and that, that's, a, that's an extremely terrible segue to what happened obviously at the end of the main event tonight, um, which... I, I believe that I know that it was called on this show. I'm wanting to say that it was Matt Michaels. So if it was props to you, sir. Um, and you know, we, you called this a long time ago, man. So, uh, you know, obviously Adam Cole, super kicking Kyle O'Reilly. And now it appears that Kyle O'Reilly out of undisputed era. Well, let's, let's, let's be real though. I mean, definitely give Michaels his, I mean, his, his props, but I mean, how long these guys been together, though? At some point, you know it was going to happen. It was just a matter of when. Yeah, but I called him kicking O'Reilly, putting O'Reilly out, blah, 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 whatever. And let's not give him a parade because <laughs> may not stay on that float for long. So where do you guys think um, this goes, where this goes from now um, with Adam Cole? Uh right. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Main, I'm, I'm saying main roster. Uh, I think Adam Cole's. I mean, I mean, he won't be. I don't think it'll be immediately. But uh, seeing the end part with uh, Roderick Strong was kind of looking like, what do I do? Pretty much Roddy in the middle. Mm -hmm. You know, I think this. You're seeing the dismantling of UE um, for all intents and purposes, and you're going to see um, at some point, probably within a month, maybe probably around May. I don't know. Maybe before Mania, or maybe after Mania. You'll see Adam Cole uh, to the main roster. Yes, Matt, Matt Michaels, go ahead. Anytime oh, wow. within the you next six covered, months. Yeah, you just covered every single day from <laughs> until next year. Well, you know, I mean, it, it's the inevitable. So, hey, pick a goddamn month. It's going to happen within one of those. Yeah. Well, um, I guess that still kind of was a shock, though, because although we never knew when it was going to happen, it... it <laughs> Oh, sorry about that. Wow. Hey, um, zip that up, bro. Zip that up. <laughs> no, just jumping online just to um, see who are all here. And I see a couple of people here. Welcome to the uh, to the online chat for those that are here. Um, yeah, I um, yeah, it was it was, it was just shocking to, to see it actually happen. Like I say, we knew at some point it was it was going to. But um, I tell you, just the match, though, that. Um, that came from Pete Dunn and Balor was just really, it was really incredible uh, just to see them. And I, 
I guess you kind of, well, I don't want to speak for anyone. I, I kind of thought Balor was going to somehow end up winning, but Pete definitely shows that he is, he's ready to be at that level. Would anybody disagree with that? He's been on that level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's been on that level. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm happy he getting some shine, but shout out to Finn Balor. Uh, hashtag, how you going to pee tonight? Because them, them fingers is broken, bro. <laughs> Eat tonight. How, how you going to do anything that requires your fingers? You're going to need a personal assistant to open doors, put clothes on. He couldn't even do his fingers at the end. He was like this, like, boy, Pete done put work in them fingers, boy. Yeah. That match, that match was something special. That was That was really just the 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 capstone on quite frankly one of the better pay-per-views that i've seen as far as in-ring work from them in right. quite some time and that says something because nxt generally delivers anyway yeah um but i do there was there was a section in this pay-per-view where i was just i i, I it was like several five-star matches just right, right in a row um you know i made a comment in the vegas bad boys chat that whatever match was going to end up following the Kushida and Gargano match uh, is probably going to end up being a letdown because mm -hmm. of how great Kushida and Gargano was, um, right. but it didn't. And obviously we, we saw how, you know, MSK and the grizzled young vets kicked each other's asses. Um, and I mean, it was, it was fucking awesome, man. It like, was. Yeah. I was, I was thoroughly entertained. Mm -hmm. uh, this was quite, the best, the best WWE branded pay per view in a long time for me. I agree. I, you know, I made one of the comments, and I wasn't joking. Um, I'm like, uh, excuse me, NXT. I gotta go to the bathroom. Yeah. It's like seriously, <laughs> I gotta go. Where's the bathroom break? Because <laughs> and, for, and then for you, the women came on the TV, and you're like, oh, okay, good. Wow, wow. That's that's Wait. DJ Impact. <laughs> Just like, oh, oh, the women's title match. No, that's good. I'm good. I'll go, you know. But you know what I will say about you? Well, that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> because the NXT, even the NXT women's match, again, because you, they did they, such a, a strong show, you're going, oh, well, this one's just going to be just as good. And it was good. I'm still not saying it's not a horrible match. That you know? didn't finish, though. Right, exactly. That that finish. I mean, obviously they were they were short on time or they were over or something. I mean, they just. Well, if you remember, I said exactly in when we was on our online chat, and and we do invite folks that uh, when we promote uh, to for you to uh, jump on our app. Hopefully, you have it. It's available on iPhone and on Android. Download it for free. Uh, jump on the chat, and you can chat with us. But one of the things I had mentioned was. Okay, Eel somehow is probably more likely going to win, but the only way she's going to win is if she capitalized uh, from, you know, Tony and Martinez beating up on each other. Because it's where else was she? I mean, she couldn't fight one of them one on one, and it happened exactly like that. It just wait, didn't. Wait, wait, you wait. We go through this every every Sunday. Every. No. Why are we going to go there? Just go ahead. No, I'm I'm just confused. You're saying she can't go to, against either one of them, yet she beat Io Shirai for the May Young Classic. She wrestled her one on one. She could take Tony. I, Io Shirai lost to Tony Storm, and they they wrestled. So I I I I get that, but I'm just saying that just in this. In this situation, when you have two other women at the same size in the ring, it would be it, it would be kind of impossible for her to have that one on one when one of the others could eventually come back in and then disrupt that. So that's what I'm speaking of in terms yeah, of that. I mean, that's why it's a three way. I understand, but so I, you've had a three way before. You say what? <laughs> 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 You've had a three-way before. Oh man, I've never had a three-way before, but uh, you know, but uh, but nevertheless, you know, um, happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Who would you? Never mind. I'm not even gonna go down. More you know <laughs> to be in a three-way with. Let me jump over to um, the Johnny. Who have been in a three-way? Who? <laughs> 
Let me jump on over to. Let me jump over to the Johnny Gargano Yoshida match. Um, so I like the idea that somehow um, Austin gets lost coming out during the entrance, right? And he tells him to go find them. But they never come back out. And I really thought that they were going to be, when they find him, they were going to come back and somehow help him win. But he won that straight up. I mean, did you, you, would you, did you guys think the same thing? I mean, there, we don't know what happened. I guess we'll find out Wednesday. But would you not think that at some point they were going to return and they got maybe even help him? Test back. Say it again. They got their COVID test back. No. <laughs> right at that moment. But they're supposed to go out. But... Oh, you guys are positive. He came in a little too hot with the temperature, so we got Kiki out there. No, I was definitely going to say that uh, it, it made total sense to me. First and foremost, I will say that we know Johnny Gargano, a.k.a. Johnny Takeover, when he wants to flip that switch, he can flip that switch. Plain and simple. He's shown us time and time again. Uh, so he doesn't have to be chicken shit heel, technically to be honest with you. And he did that. He knew he wasn't going to have the chicken chicken shit heel preset option. And so he went Johnny Takeover. But, you know, it makes sense because his next opponent is Dexter Loomis. And I feel like he's going to have to bring that intensity with uh, Dexter Loomis. But, you know, who knows? He'll probably come up with some more uh, the way hijinks to win that match, possibly. I hope not, because I like Johnny Takeover. <clears throat> So, I mean, I like the idea of, of Johnny winning, but during that match, I mean, Kushida was showing that he was dominating him with that arm to a point where it almost seemed like that arm was just useless. And then with two of his, his finishers, um, you know, Johnny's finishers, he, he, you know, he ends up winning with that. Um, I mean, is, is that something that's okay with you guys when you see that when you're, I know we're used to seeing the idea of somebody getting beat up and they make this miraculous return, but because that match was so good, it almost seems like Kushida in many ways should have probably came out on top. Am I wrong on that one? I mean, yeah. I, I, okay. <laughs> I guess so then. I can't. I, I, I personally, I would have rather seen Kushida win that match. Of course you would. Of course I would have. But, yeah, but in any in any event, I mean, we'll see where the storyline takes us from here. But I I would have been I would have been completely good with Kushida coming out yeah. on top, taking that title. It frees up Gargano to do God only knows what else. But it but they already showed us he's it's gonna be the Loomis Gargano feud for the belt, especially going into WrestleMania weekend. If you're going to do something special, if you're going to run a show or put it on the WrestleMania card, Loomis versus him for the for the North American sounds like a fucking wonderful match. Does he drop the title to Loomis? Probably not. Hmm. I wouldn't. Well, Loomis doesn't I, talk, so. Well, I will say this for uh, Kushida. What I am excited is seeing more shades of Kushida that we've known for the longest time. And I'm glad that NXT, and I've said this before, but I'm seeing consistency that they're kind of doing it. And, and, and for me, honestly, in a way, there was a small part I was kind of happy he didn't win the North America. I want to see him win the NXT title. Truth, truth be told, I want to see him win the NXT. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Regrettably, I agree with you, Michaels. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. fine. Mine. That's mine. it's all good simon I, I i don't think that i don't think he'll win the the main nxt championship but it's which is on ability I, I think he's it's, yeah it's not based off of his ability or any of that kind of thing i just i don't see him with that title not the right fit yeah it sucks though because oh, definitely you know that 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 is a problem that i'm sure is for another conversation at another time exactly when it comes to the the women's uh, uh, Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, did you guys enjoy that one? We haven't talked much. Ra Raquel and Dakota uh, took on Shotzi and Amber. Um, what's your take? I, I don't know. Can you tell us more about this women's Dusty what? <laughs> Can you stop? Are you saying it because it's a Dusty Cup? Are you, are you referring to 
dusty bra cup size. Is that what you're saying? Go ahead. A dirty minus stretch two. Oh my gosh. Continue. In fact, what was the question you're asking? What did we think about uh, yeah, that match? It, it, it was a good match. Um, me and you's pick, I think we, at first we wanted uh, Ember, Ember and Shotzi to win. Uh, but unfortunately, I mean, you can't keep a, a strong <laughs> Raquel Gonzalez. <laughs> they, they, they tried to throw everything at her and she's just so goddamn powerful. And um, but that one move where um, Dakota Kai was on uh uh was it ember moon's uh shoulders was she on ember moon's shoulders and or, or some but no 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 she was on shotzi uh shotzi's uh shoulders and on the outside of the ring and ember moon uh looked like she did a, a drop kick to her and she fell or no she did something no she, yeah she she's almost this is the worst recap ever <laughs> in my mind i'm recapping in my mind. anyways that's fine right there i was like damn you little girl your back hurt <laughs> But it was a good match. I I enjoyed it. I'm happy for them winning, even though they weren't my team I picked. Does anybody know the name of that move? What what was she trying to do? Because I was going to say a blockbuster at first off the top. Y'all watch the same goddamn pay-per-view I did. What, anybody? Even somebody in the chat. What was she trying to do? I don't know. What I don't know. Well, apparently me pausing, trying to figure out what that was called is the same thing y'all was trying to figure out. A but Frankensteiner? Was it a Frank? Yeah, maybe it was Frank. Yeah, it was Frankenstein. Okay, maybe. Well, yeah, I mean, o overall though, um, that that was a um, a good match. Uh, Ember took a a a, a, a hard toss um, over onto the floor <laughs> by uh, uh, Raquel. Man, I tell you, I um, yeah, she's 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 a beast, man. She's gonna be awesome when she gets. To uh to to move up that chain, um, but congratulations to them, man. They they did it just as well as we kind of mentioned earlier with uh, MSK on the men's side, taking on the grizzled young veterans. Um, and, and yes, and like we talked about, that was, you know, it's funny because for people who are not familiar with, I, I guess MSK is you know, and I, and I just I'm lucky to have just enjoyed watching the Rascals for so long that, you know seeing a lot of those moves or a lot of things that we got a chance to see there, but now seeing them on the NXT side, they just, they just look great uh, there. Like they're just was meant to be a part of that. So, so that, that's a very good point. Mm -hmm. And in watching that, it just goes to show. If you look at them in another company, yeah, right. You look at them in this company, mm -hmm. they're fucking great. Yeah. And it's just because of the step up between companies. Mm, I think I, I I think you do have a point, but there are certain people, and the Rascals is one of them. I I knew that if they ever got to WWE, they would shine. So it, they were shining in impact. Well, same fucking thing I just said. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> on that WWE DI double double K. I'm just saying, all I'm merely saying is that anybody who watched Impact as a product knew that they were a stand apart. Like like the Rascals, all three of those members. That were wasn't the point. The point was that if you put those guys in the WWE, they're going to be successful. The same fucking thing you just said. You just reiterated what I said. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. Besides all that, all I will tell you is 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 the one great thing I like like with MSK is MX, MSK is the tag team of this generation. They are the Hardy Boys, Chris, uh, Edge and Christian, you know the Dudley Boys. Those premier tag teams they are for this generation. Their whole style, everything it matches with this generation. Us guys that aren't in that demographic or you know maybe not agree to that, but if you talk to a lot of younger cats, they're gonna be around for a long time. Especially the one up there. Especially Matt Michaels with his old ass. When you speak to a lot of the young cats, what the fuck, dude? Oh, man, whatever, bro. Uh, first off, first off, who, who the fuck are you hanging around with that you call young cats? And number two, you sound like an 80-year-old man calling people young cats. What the fuck? 
ever. You say what you want, Michael. Say what you want, bro. Say what you want. Excellent. Absolutely excellent. There you go. Gosh, we are celebrating. Hey, that's what I think. Hype didn't sound like the WWE. <laughs> yeah, man. Exactly. I, hyping in that sound. <laughs> yeah. Well, cool, man. Um, I guess we just pretty much summed it up. Overall, though, I mean, you, you guys, like, I think Sin City did, a, uh, like you said, it was definitely one of the top shows that we've seen and it's it's amazing nxt just um it's like they just can't do no wrong huh (laughs) why'd you jinx them speaking of doing no wrong Mm -hmm. there was one thing in that show that went wrong okay and that's when tony storm went over to set up the table and take it off she touched it and that table just (laughs) yeah (laughs) Hey, Michael, do you know what that was? That was the next level of Finger of Doom. <laughs> Dude. Oh, 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 go ahead, man. No, I was going to say, you know what? I'll give it to you. By her being able to do that, she is stronger than Neo Shirai. Yes. <laughs> They're touching my ass. Nice one. Um, Okay, how about L.A. Knight showed up, right? L.A. Knight. Don't like the name, love the guy. Love Eli Drake, can't, I, please get to, get to the main roster so Vince McMahon can cut that name part and just have Knight, I don't know. You don't like L.A. Knight, huh? No, it sounds like a club. What? Hang, hang on. So you want him to get to the main roster so that Vince can take L.A. out of his name. So that he'll just be Knight. Do you want him to come out in like a fucking coat of arms or some shit like this is World of fucking Warcraft? Better than fucking Knight. But yes, that would be cool if he did come out with a coat of arms. Like, like Jesus. I don't like the name Knight. I was excited to see him. I was like, oh man, Eli Drake, yeah. And he said, L.A. Knight. I was like, what the fuck is L.A. Knight? Oh, this well, is a- what, would you Would you have kept the name Drake? It's better than freaking L.A. Knight. Oh, except for the fact that Eli Drake, okay, could not be on a show with Drake Maverick and one half of a tag team who the guy's name is fucking Drake. And that's all they said through the goddamn match. Yeah, so, you no, you had to change it. And LA Knight is fine because he's from Los Angeles, man. And he's fucking playing a Hollywood character. You could tell right off the bat. But, I'll go with your genius booking. Let's call up to the main roster and let him be a night in which you think it's perfectly fine. All I'm saying is they could have done a better job <laughs> with the generator for this guy. But I'm happy that regardless of what the fuck Simon Street thinks of his name, he speaking he, of name generators. Exactly. He got he got his from the same generator I put my name in. Yeah. <laughs> You're an idiot. <laughs> oh my god, that pipe didn't sound. Every everybody got to us but me and, and Sin City Steve. We got the mute master Michaels, and then we got the piped in sound of impact. We need to get us some fucking gifts, man. Shit. Right? Duh. Winning. All right. So look, let's uh, let's move over then. Uh impact wrestling had no surrender happening this Saturday. Um and you I mean, actually you mean no talent because they're all either on AEW or just signed with NXT. <laughs> <laughs> First off, they have talent. Okay. All right. Stop that. It's ridiculous. No, say it with chess. <laughs> <laughs> and it was actually, it was a pretty good pay-per-view as well. I was quite entertained for what I saw. They, they kicked it off with uh, Triple XL and uh, with Tennille uh, versus Decay and a guy named Black Tarus, which abar- apparently this guy is from Triple uh, A. Lucha Libre, and um, this is uh, this was his first Triple A. Um, I guess the first Triple A match that they had in Impact since the entire um, COVID uh, kicked in. So, um, but yeah, so he is now a part of the K, and um, and they won the match against Triple XL and Tennille. So, are you familiar with him at all, uh, Matt Michaels? No, I. Uh, here's the thing. Uh, luchadors all look the same to me <laughs> except for one that is wearing a ah. fucking taurus mask complete with the fucking horns right 
This guy looks absolutely nothing like any other luchador on the planet. Right. And honestly, I, I was really surprised to see that the, they brought in Black Taurus. Uh, mm-hmm. Even more so that they that they put him with DK, right? Um, but yeah, uh, nonetheless, he he is very he is very good in the ring. Um, yeah. He's very entertaining, and uh, somehow he's able to you know put on a, put on great matches wearing that ridiculous Taurus mask. <laughs> That's true. Which. You know- and obviously, you know, I'm saying it's ridiculous, but I'm just obviously that's hyperbole. I, like I, the dude, the dude is talented. Um, I've seen him work live uh, on a few indie shows. Guy's yeah. awesome. So well, good get by impact for sure. What I would say is it's awesome that D took it up the next step because when I first saw it, I was like, man, this is what I wanted psychosis is uh, for it to be a long time ago. <laughs> if you took... Psychosis from WCW days and turned it real fucking Taurus. If you get that dude, yep, yep, <clears throat> yeah. Do you know who uh, uh, Psychosis is? I just want to know. Uh, you know what? Listen, when it comes to masked wrestlers, there's only one, and his name is Mantar. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. For okay. fuck's sake. There was also a match. Um, they had Matt Cardona with Eddie Edwards uh, versus Brian Matters and uh, Brian Myers with Hernandez. Now, the only reason why they pretty much had that match is because, you know, Matt and Brian pretty much has, haven't been in a ring since I think they were tag team champions over at Raw as, you know, Zack Ryder and Curtis Hawkins. So being that um, they're now over at an impact, they haven't had a match yet. And the whole purpose of this match was, you know, now that they're in this tag team, they kept them from touching each other from the entire time they've been there. And they've been on, been on impact. Well, I, I've seen Matt's now been on air for. You are time. seriously trying to justify this stupid story. Well, hey, no, hey, uh, you know, the, again, the whole idea, it was in this particular match, they were going to have their one-on-one, but it was just going to happen halfway during the match. So every time one would, when Eddie Edwards would, 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 uh, would tag Matt and then Brian would go out and it would just be vice versa until eventually it had to be those two in the ring and they did fight. And Brian Myers did get the pin over Matt. So Matt still is not picking up wins still over here, but uh, I'm sure he will, you know, I'm sure. Oh, God. Oh. Oh God, that was a Simon Street breakdown of this show. Oh my gosh, here you are. <laughs> you know what you are, Michaels? You are the Oscar the Grouch of Vegas Bad Boys of Podcast. I just want to put you in a goddamn garbage can. Well, uh, this, let's give this to uh, Matt Michaels. You are one pathetic loser. All right, there we go. Yeah, Ooh. but I'm not the one talking about <laughs> the relevance of Zack Ryder going against Kurt Hawkins for hey. the first time ever. Hey, because everybody in Impact are are just losers in your book, everyone I'm going to name is going to be like, are you really talking about Violet by Design? Are you really talking about Davari? Are you really talking about Rich Swan? Yeah, bro, we're going to talk about it. This might be what you might want to have your bathroom break. Remember, I was looking for that for NXT and they wouldn't give me one. I'm going to give you one right now. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, let's jump over by Violent by Design, who is uh, Eric Young, Joe During, and Diener. Uh, they were having their match against, well, he was Cousin Jake, but he ain't going by Cousin Jake anymore. He's going by the name Jake something. Jake something. <laughs> what? Yeah. Why? Why are we passing <laughs> this? <laughs> That is what he's going by. Nevertheless, they're trying to get Jake over into Violent by Design so that he could be a part of the group, trying to baptize him. And so I don't know. I say, what'd you say? You're going to baptize him in something. (laughs) Yeah, that's his name, Jake something. So we'll see where, where, where that goes, but he ain't going by Cousin Jake anymore. There was a triple threat revolver match where the number one uh, contenders match for the X Division Championship would happen out of uh, these eight wrestlers I'm going to name. And of course, how the triple threat revolver works is it starts with three, and as one gets counted out, another one comes to the ring. So who was a part of that? Davari, Suicide, Willie Mack, Ace Austin, Trey Miguel, 
Chris Bay, Josh Alexander, and Blake Christian. And one thing I thought was interesting, I don't know if you if you were aware of this in City U, I know you keep up with a lot of the news. Um, uh, Blake Christian, who I guess is really familiar in, in GCW and New Japan, yep. um, he had he I've seen him once before uh, wrestling and, and he's great and he was great in this match as well. But um, uh, I guess apparently he got signed by mm -hmm. WWE. Yeah. Yeah. Did that happen right after this match with Impact or was it? Yeah, before? this okay. was this was his last contractual appearance with them. OK, got you. Uh, nevertheless, he did. Uh, like I said, he was great to see in the ring. Um the winner of that match, believe it or not, uh, ended up being Josh Alexander. And, um, you know, he, he took all of them down. I think he was maybe fourth to the ring. And um, and that was pretty shocking because I thought Trey more than likely were going to either give it to him or Ace Austin. But, um, you know, he came out to be on top. So he will have his match either between DJ uh, TJP or Rohit when I get to that match uh, a, a little later. So yes, he won that one. There was also what was called the um, the uh, Texas Tornado match, which was the women's knockout tag team uh, women's championship with Fire and Flavor versus Havoc and Nevea. And you know, again, Fire and Flavor turned out on top. So they doing their thing, man, as the women's tag team champions over there holding it down. Um, Texas Tornado. I wasn't familiar with that, but apparently you have you have both tag teams in the ring at the same time, so there's no tagging in and out. So you know it's 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 just it's interesting because a person that is brought up mostly watching WWE, these are type of matches that I I rarely ever see ran. I mean, have these been are these more like a um, an impact thing are you guys know or they do this in wrestling in general but i just don't see them often i've seen it a couple of times in wwe i think uh, tornado uh, tags yeah yeah tornado tags have definitely been used uh, attitude, yeah. okay yeah attitude there i remember seeing a, quite a few of them yeah they just scaled back on it because it is it is more difficult for uh, announcers to call generally and also right. more difficult for them to to shoot i guess i don't know but whatever um yeah yeah i don't i I don't know why there aren't any more of them. Many more of them, I should say. Sure. When it's utilized well, I will say that. When, when you get the right teams in there, and, and like Sin City Steve was saying, and you're able to facilitate that, it, it really looks good. Yeah. Okay. Well, and there was the X Division Championship. TJP and Rohit, uh, they had their match. And who came out on top? TJP still holding it on. Even with uh, she by the ring, um, you know, he's, uh, TJP still came out. So apparently he will have that match with, uh, Josh Alexander that'll be coming up. So that should be pretty interesting to see, uh, definitely a new role for, uh, for, for Josh, but, um, I'm, I'm sure he can handle it. The other match I'm not going to really talk about. There was really nothing there to it. It was Deanna Perrazzo and Kimberly and Susan versus Jordan Grace Jazz and ODB. This is a regular match. Um, there was Saban, um, yeah, Chris Saban and Storm versus the Good Brothers versus Private Party in triple threat rules. Of course, Private Party wants to take those uh, impact uh, belts and run over there to AEW over to Sin City show, you know, and um, Matt Hardy decided he was going to get himself in, in, uh, involved in that match, do his twist of fate, you know, and it still didn't work. His Private Party did not get the job done the good brothers are still your impact tag team champion so uh so that was that was pretty interesting mac uh i i enjoyed it really was um uh, i mean and, and it showcased private party i mean private party really from when i sing them and then you guys tell me what well i don't know i don't know if y'all seen private party while they're in impact but from when you saw private party in the beginning of aew from let's say the last match you've seen on AEW. Have you seen that there's been major improvement in their wrestling? Because I, I I have. Do you, could you guys see the same or without question? Yeah, it is definitely an evolution. Yeah. They 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 just needed they just needed more reps. Yeah. And right. mm -hmm. back back when you know this whole um talent exchange began, I said that you know private party would be an amazing team to have an impact mm -hmm. and that they would use this, you know, 
probably better than most. Yeah. Um, I would actually like to see, uh, you know, another team like the acclaimed maybe come in too. Um, if they would choose to do something like that again, uh, those are two guys that are young, they need reps, but they have a ton of potential. So, right. Well, and that's my other thing. And, and we'll, uh, well, let me ask you this when, uh, on AEW, cause I didn't get to watch that this week. Did a, did a claim wrestle? Yes, they did. Yeah. Okay. Because it's just, that's the thing that, you know, from the time I told you last time that I really enjoy when they come out and, and do their thing, then they'll go like two or three weeks. You don't see them. Then they back again. That's because they got 90 people on the roster, but no one seems to complain about it. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I don't know. I've, right. I've, I've said for a long time that they need to get that other block of programming, Matt. Yep. Oh, no, no. The, the block of programming, fine. But I mean, you know, the fact that Sure, they they have they have a, a huge roster, but yeah. again, they need more programming so that they can better showcase those people that are on the roster. Mm-hmm. I think they need also some, they need better like um, direction of where they're going with that, because look at how many like this past week with uh, the nightmare stuff. Okay, Mayor family. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice little setup, getting some rub to a person who hasn't won a single match. Was it zero and 21 or what was it? Zero and one was, yeah. Which, yeah, is, you know, we'll talk about right. that in a bit, but yeah, yeah. But, but that's that's the thing. It's like it'd be nice if you could, um, if you could get showcasing for these guys. So, I think that it's not going to come down to another programming block as much as the fact will they acquire impact. If they acquire impact, the whole system is going to change and people are going to be out of jobs, but you're also going to get more development. So. There's no talk about that, is there? Let's put it this way. I hope not. Jesus. Let's, well, actually, to be honest with you, let's put it this way. Why would it not be the inevitable? Ask yourself those questions. People have been trying to kill off impact for the last 10 years. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much under the assumption that literally impact wrestling would survive a nuclear holocaust at this point <laughs> yeah to, to be- cockroaches twinkies and impact wrestling those are the only things that will survive but listen let me ask now i'm i've been you know now be, been watching impact for like the last couple of years i didn't really watch it when it was ran by uh jeff jarrett or when written by russo or bischoff or what was the their what was her name miss the, what was the, oh, I don't know. What was her name? Dixie Carter. Dixie, Dixie. Okay. So I didn't watch. So listen. Not that stripper, Misty. Dixie Carter. <laughs> Misty, Dixie, whatever. I don't know. Misty. Um, so wait, who no. was the threesome with? Was it with Misty and, and who? Cinnamon. It was cinnamon. <laughs> Misty, Cinnamon, and Firecracker. Oh, God. Um, but nevertheless, so, but with Scott Diamore, and you know, I know he's the face of the the front office. Since you know, I've seen him and running an impact to me seems to just be like it's like they finally maybe figured got their shit together. Is it just me or am I just wrong? Or you still think they're full of shit? No, 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 no. But think about that for a second. If you were gonna sell a house, wouldn't you want to fix it up and made it make put money into it as best you can to present it to put it on market? It's almost the same. I feel that let's just say if AEW does acquire Impact Wrestling, I think that Impact will be preserved for the most part. It won't be like 100%, but it's a hell of a lot better than having some other, well, hey, I got a whole bunch of money. My name is Money Mark Jenkins, and I'm going to buy me Impact Wrestling. And then it goes to shit. At least with AEW, it'll at least be preserved if, if that's the case scenario, and you'll still enjoy watching it. Well, you know, listen, please, I thought... please. Move it along. We just got an impersonation of whatever the hell that was. <laughs> See, because I'm fulfilling my contractual obligations to the Vegas bad boys of doing impersonations. You, sir, never do it. That's not an impersonation. That's an abomination. There's a difference. Listen to our <laughs> show. You know, ladies and gentlemen, that our impersonations are shit and we're aware of it. You know, I guess, I guess, and, and again, I, I this was my first time, so I was like, uh, first time hearing the idea of if that would happen i've always was under what i've always wished would have happened when wwe 
took acquire WCW was that they would have, you know, of course they purchased it, but let it run itself separate. Okay. I've always they didn't have TV. Yeah. yeah, I get that, but I'm just saying, like I, I just hate the idea of them. That's what I was just. I wish there was a way they could have could have figured it. I would hate to see that same thing happen where if AEW were to do that, that they decide they would want to. But that's it. But, but that's it. If AEW, if AEW buys them, they're buying themselves an NXT. Basically, that's what this is. So if that does happen, that's what you're looking at. You're looking at a lot of those impact people just being let go because it's too much, you know, added to what they have now. Um, and it becomes the training ground because they already have TV with access. And access could also be part of something bigger in you terms of the that. impact wrestlers, they would a lot of them would be let go and not the AEW ones. Yeah. Absolutely. That that's the natural well, all right. Well listen. We're not, talking, we're not talking main roster people, like the main people. You're not talking moose. You're talking about all those people who are getting shots who don't get to be on other TV programs. That's you know the concern. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the last one it was the Impact Wrestling Championship. And um, this one was Rich Swan, And I'm pretty sure Matt Michaels will be like uh, WTF on this. But it was against Tommy Dreamer. And I, I guess the whole idea with that was, you know, it, Valentine's Day happens to be Tommy Dreamer's birthday. He happens now to be turning 50. And they wanted to celebrate him in some way for him being in wrestling for so long for him to have an opportunity for the world title. Uh, now, of course, they didn't give him the title. Rich Juan still uh, ended up getting it. Tommy did as much as he can do. And, and Tommy also referenced that, look, I can't do half the shit I used to do. So, you know, I, I, I'm damn near hurting getting out of the bed. But still, this is an opportunity and probably my very last opportunity I would ever have for a world title. So I'll take it. He did, he lost. Um, and Moose eventually, which was the whole setup, came out at the end and whooped both of their asses because that's going to be the next big match, Rich Swan and Moose. And Moose maybe can finally put away that TNA title, but the way he ended the show, he had both titles in his head, so he's going to be a double champion in his mind. But um, anyway, that was uh, it. Was no surrender overall? I thought it was a a, a really good uh, a pay per view that Impact put together. And uh, really? you don't think really? so? <laughs> Okay. You're not going to even talk about like the biggest thing to come out of that paper out of that pay per view. <laughs> really? Big enough for him. It wasn't big to him. Evidently not. New Japan Pro Wrestling. David Finley, Juice Robinson will be appearing next week on Impact on Access. But, oh. he, but, but here's the thing: he also didn't watch AEW this week either. So I mean, you know. No, no. Well, I was actually okay. Well, I was going to mention that over in the New Japan part of our of our segment. That's what I. That's what I. But that's okay. But yeah, you're right. I. I no. That I, you're right. I. That's what I was going to save that for. But talk about it, man. That is big. It, it's it's huge. Um, the <laughs> fuck fucking Michaels just kick kicks back his head and laughs. Um, now <laughs> realistically, I mean. New Japan and Impact used to have an amazing working relationship. Uh, you had people such as Shinsuke Nakamura, such as Kazuchika Okada um, show up in Impact. And granted, they weren't uh, treated the, uh, the best in, in terms of their gimmick or their booking. But nonetheless, it was part of their excursion um, to the States. So both of those guys went to Impact and did their time there. They came back to New Japan, uh, as is customary with their Young Lion program that they have. Um, and both guys are obviously monstrous stars. Um, we all know about Nakamura and what he's done in WWE. Um, but uh, there's also Kazuchika Okada, and the things he has gone on to in New Japan have been legendary at this point. Absolutely. Um... I guess we will um, we will see again. It's um, impact is still just kind of building their um, 
you know, their talent. Impact. Impact. I just want to let you know, man, because you have this sad look on your face when we kind of busted your bubble. You look like that kid who's scared their parents are going to get a divorce or something. OK, it's it's, it's OK. It's not going to immediately happen. It it could happen. Oh, but- no, dude, dude, your mom is going to be fucking someone else very soon. Oh, I could be your dad. <laughs> you know what's sad? I can see Michaels as a kid be that one kid just to say that. Get over that shit. Your mom. <laughs> <laughs> no compassion <laughs> yeah no 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 those why the divorce kids i go straight to the people who had their mom or dad die oh shit <laughs> oh boy brutal man that's let's brutal. uh let's jump over to wwe raw on monday night um Anything that really stood out? I mean, Shane McMahon did kick off the show, so it was great to see Mr. McMahon, or I should, I should I call him Mr. Well, he is Mr., but he's, you know, that goes for Vince, so Shane McMahon. It was it's, Shane McMahon. And I mean, put some respect on his name, man. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. McMahon, he can be. Well, I mean, he can be, but, you know, come on. When you say Mr. McMahon, you know you're talking about the big boss. Okay, that's you that say that. I don't say right. that. But Maybe anyway, we, uh, we got... Interesting question. Mm-hmm. At Shane's age now, do you still feel comfortable calling him Shane O'Mac? I don't. <laughs> That's a good question. I, I think I will call him Shane O'Mac. Really? Yeah. Hey, you 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 now have to call him that the next time we go to like a WrestleMania, not in Tampa, but in Dallas. Yeah, I'll call him Shane O'Mac. Sure. That's man saying Shane O'Mac by yourself. You're gonna be over there with some mom. With, with an old Attitude Era shirt saying Shane O'Mac. <laughs> and, and you got to do the dance in the stands. You know, a little dance where you shuffle and shit. So the Elimination Chamber is uh, what he came to uh, talk about as he thought would be really great to have Drew uh, have this, uh, have Drew actually in the Elimination Chamber going against Randy Orton, Jeff Hardy, AJ Styles, The Miz, and Sheamus. But who's uh, that? Was it? I'm sorry again. But whose idea was it originally? <sighs> who 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 knows? I mean, you know, Adam says it's his his idea. I'm talking about for the show's sake. I'm not talking about who in the back thought of it. I'm saying it was Adam. It was presented that was Adam Pierce. You did <clears> good job. Right. Good job. You did you? Up. So d- did you not pick up on the the interplay there? Is that for Simon? Him? Yeah. No, because um, the. You know, Adam Pierce's reply of, you know, it that it was he was he his he like he appeared to be shocked um when when that announcement was made. And so Kevin, yeah, me. so I I don't know if this is turning into some sort of an angle, hopefully God not, between Shane McMahon and Adam Pierce. Um, but I mean if that's what we get out of this, then that's what we get out of this. Um but yeah, I just, I noticed that it almost felt like as if they were planting seeds uh, mm-hmm. just because of the way that uh, Shane O'Mac <laughs> and uh, Adam Pierce uh, inter- interplayed with each other. Hmm. I'll go watch that back again because I, you know, it went over my head. It really did. Yeah. Surprise. Oh my gosh. Anyway, Shocker. I was going to say the reason why hey, I went over my head, hey. I thought he would have done a rebuttal on SmackDown. We could talk oh, about Oh, that was Naya. No. <laughs> Naya's hole almost caved in. <laughs> oh God! My hole is she right before she went through the table? Ow, my butt, my <laughs> hole. Did she say that? I didn't, no. hear, but I heard hole. Oh. No, she actually said you broke my hole. <laughs> yes, she did. <laughs> that was the actual sentence, because she hits it. And she goes, ow, my butt. And then she goes almost right into camera. You broke my hole. <laughs> that was just like, Jesus. Well, and the crazy thing is that shit was so funny that nobody noticed. And luckily the camera didn't catch it. Lana was about to have a wardrobe malfunction <laughs> right when she put it through the table. All types of a mess that match was. but That's right up there with Shelly Martinez screaming about her vag on a TNA pay-per-view. <laughs> that sounds funny <laughs> uh, but, but uh, i think i think that goes to point that 
Raw was dominated by Nia's asshole. Yeah. <laughs> now that's wrong. <laughs> you guys didn't like the uh, Flair, Lacey, Charlotte segment? Not really? Didn't I, thought hate it. Was, I thought it was pretty cool. Hit it, but uh, just much like the match, Lacey versus uh, Asuka could care less. Hmm. I'm not, I mean, I mean, I'll be shocked. If Lacey pulls up the victory of the century, but let's be fucking honest, that's not gonna happen. Let me ask you this, and let me go over you, Michaels. Who is, or who do you expect, or who have you read, in if you read the dirt blocks, that Drew McIntyre is supposed to face for Mania? Fuck if I know. Who would you? What would you think if you if it was up to you? Like if you had to guess, what, what what would you say? I don't know. That's I mean that's tough. Um, that's so. Let me let me just throw this out here because I want you to you're gonna beat me up and that's fine. Um, I'm I, I need a good beating I guess and maybe you other uh, two gentlemen can either agree with me or did you invite me into the threesome there? You're invited. <laughs> Listen. And this is, this is, listen, Bobby Lashley, he, in the past few weeks, I know, Dominated. has been dominating. Not only has he whooped up on, on, on Riddle, right? But he even showed his dominance over Keith. Mm -hmm. I, he, there he, was some dominance. Wait, wait, wait. And he, so, he, listen. Wait, wait. So does, wait. He showed that over Keith, but is it? Am, am I not correct? Keith had to be taken off TV because of the, the his his woman having COVID. Yeah. So. Well, it's not his woman. Know, it's his fiance because he's engaged. So. Oh, I'm sorry. I refer to her as his woman, not his fiance. Pardon me, Mister marriage etiquette man hey i'm my etiquette is perfect in the beginning but maybe not so great on the after why why I, I, bobby lashley why yeah. can't why can't mvp be his mouthpiece and he be the dominant wrestler build him up from this point now into going into mania i'm not saying that he wins the belt but why not sell that because we already have it on smackdown roman and paul you just recreated roman and paul for bra that's what you did well I, what i'm saying is the reality of it is if you're going to have somebody for drew drew done went through everybody who is he going to have if you, you you can't you can't even bring back brock because of Paul's situation. So Throw what I'm saying is, is just, just for him. Mania, why not use as big as, as Lashley looked? He looks good, despite if you don't like him or not. And, you, and, I, and I know you have. And you got, listen, Sin City and, and Simon Street agrees with you, all right? All I'm saying is the way that he's been looking as of lately and the way that they're building him, and the way that MVP, of course, is holding down, uh, he's always been holding down the mic. Why not use that as something that could be an incredible match that eventually can go into... Oh, 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 you just got the mute there. Incredible match. Come on. I like the fact that he's still talking. I know. I know. He hasn't figured <laughs> out how to do it yet. Because right when you look like you're about to touch it, I'm like, all right, let me unmute it. You have to push the button right. Th Good job. All right. Just want to make sure you got it. Come on. Finish, Impact. Finish. Don't don't let them steal your thunder. Well, no, I, I listen, I believe what I believe. And I, I believe that Bobby is definitely him and MVP would be will be great, a great buildup for uh uh Drew. I agree. I do. I'm just saying. I don't see anybody else. You tell me. I just put you on the spot and told you to tell me who you think Roman. that Drew. Who? Roman. What? Roman. 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 
Braun. Oh, Braun. Okay. Strowman. Okay, so Braun Strowman. He's okay. got he's got a blood infection. He's not gonna. He's. Yeah, yeah, he does. Hey, I heard yeah. That. I don't. I don't know. I don't know if he's gonna be healthy for Mania, for, or at least for the Mania push. So. Him thick would still be better than Lashley. But why? I but disagree. Why not Lashley. You say why not Lashley? Because it's like watching fucking paint dry with the guy. And for just- almost twenty years, okay, it's but- been nothing. The what? last two weeks that I've seen with Lashley. I'm just saying the way that he they that he that they have presented him to look. They Show presented to Matt Riddle. So you think Matt Riddle can go like that, but he couldn't he couldn't uh, uh he couldn't beat uh what you call it Keith Lee. Matt Riddle went in overtime with Keith Lee. I'm saying Matt Riddle has a a body type that's your type, right? You know, skinny, lanky like that i don't see any threat in matt riddle versus bobby lashley so you had him beat up a guy who is fucking basically you know he should be beating him up i understand that That, 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 which is the same exact what i was mentioning earlier about eo going against either one of those two women that was in there when you have someone when you compare the size i get that what you're saying at the same time though you have when you had him, uh, uh, let me ask you this. Attack, let me ask, when that had attacked Keith, Keith. he no, attacked let's... Keith and he showed pretty much dominance within that as well. Whatever. The, 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 the question here is this Would you pay the $500 for a ticket to see Bobby Lashley versus Drew as your main event? Yeah. Yes. So yeah. You guys are fucking insane. You know what? We're fucking. Where is you, where are you getting this five hundred bucks from? Because we need it. Y'all ass dance. We gonna make your ass dance. We gonna put you in a threesome. Make some money off your ass. So, right. so here's here's well, the well, thing: is it, yeah. it if done right, it couldn't it could be okay, but yeah. realistically, just knowing how WWE does things, they would they would find a way to fuck it up. Um, well, obviously, you're gonna have to get you away. you've got to get the U.S. title off of him. Right. You know, in yeah. in this very way, next match. By the way, Sin City, I'm not even saying that this is going to happen. More than no, like, no, 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 I know not. It's probably not. I'm just saying I don't see why it would not be a fit. The way that I see that they're now building Bobby, the last two weeks, it seemed like something that could be a good match if they continue on that level. Um, and 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 you know, and hell, he might have his match or interference or whatever against Keith Lee. Man handles him again. Uh, and whatever capacity, it shows that he has the strength to go up against Drew, and it could make if if, if so right and build right, it could make a good uh, a match. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I, I don't I don't think it's going to happen. I'm just saying I think it could. Are you sure you didn't watch TNA back in the day? Because you yeah. just took two ex TNA guys basically who are uh, supposed to you know revitalize their careers in TNA, and they're about as good as they were in TNA right now. You still have the belt, so what are you going to do? You, you, you still couldn't tell me who Drew was going to actually fight against for Mania. And I told you Strowman. And he just told you why Strowman couldn't. Well, I'm sorry. Wait, let me go through the whole Rolodex then. Okay, let's see. Who can you wrestle? Okay, Edge. Then he's got Edge, right? That's stupid. Oh, that doesn't oh, make any sense. Let's go over to... Oh, uh, wait, wait, wait. Whoa, 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 whoa. Time oh, out. Time out. Wait. Wait, Wait, last week, was it not you who said that that Edge versus Drew would be a great match? No, it was actually me. I was the oh, one. that was you? I don't know. Never mind. That was dumb. That, that was me. I mean, it's fine. I said it. I said it. I said it. Um, but you know who else said something? Uh, I'm going to agree with what Randy said in the chat. Randy did say that Bobby won a big title. And I beg to differ with a lot of people. And I agree with Impact that I think that this might be the best chance for Bobby in that capacity if he had MVP as a mouthpiece and just like Sin City Steve, if they did it correctly and they didn't follow the fuckery pattern that WWE does tend to have with a brilliant idea, it could work because Strowman's off the table. Matt Riddle, I think we can all agree, why that might not go the way it should go, okay? So who else do you got? Yeah, you, you don't have anybody. I mean, ultimately, what you have to do, if, you, if you're if you going to go down this route... That's what I'm saying. <laughs> if, if you're going to go down that route, 
Um, you just have Keith Lee pin Riddle. Uh, so that, that way Bobby Lashley doesn't get pinned in the, in their three way at the elimination chamber. That mm -hmm. way it still keeps him strong. And mm -hmm. then, you know, you have Bobby come out on raw and he just says, Oh, well, I'm, I'm done with the U S title. I'm looking for bigger and better things. And then he goes after drew. Sure. I mean, that's, that's the only way that it, that that could work. And you got MVP as a mouthpiece. MVP right. has been on fire. Even in commentary on Monday, he's entertaining to have. Sorry so to shit in your cereal, Michaels, but it sounds like <laughs> as if that could very well happen. Or right. at least it's logic. It's logical. Right. All right. AEW. Let's jump over to there. Um, Sin City. Um, tell us what went through, man. I actually didn't get you to see the show. It's recorded, so I would definitely uh, take a look at it. But um, tell us what happened. All right. So... I'm not going to recap the entire show. <clears throat> anyway, um, I will mention a few bright spots. Um, I thought that uh, the Darby Allen, Joey Janela match, uh, everyone thought that it was going to be a, a garbage fest, uh, just a ton of weapons and just crazy shit going on. These guys outside of a couple of dives kept it inside of the ring. And I, I thought that this match was much better than what it had the capability of being or what it should have been, honestly. Um, Joey Janela is floundering at best right now. And it, you know, it is what it is. Um, yeah, they, uh, they gave Darby some shine, obviously, um, only to get dragged later. And yeah. we'll talk about that. Um, you did have uh, Lee Johnson getting his first win in 29 attempts, um, mm. which was cool as he teamed with Cody Rhodes against Peter Avalon and Cesar Bononi. Um, of note in this match, uh, Cesar Bononi uh, picked up Cody for a back body drop and dropped him on his shoulder, leading to a slight tear of Cody's rotator cuff. <laughs> uh, whether or not that's a shoot, we'll find out, but... Um, supposedly he will be okay for the shack match so um after the match uh lee johnson was giving thanks to everybody in the nightmare family that helped him except for qt marshall so uh they're evidently going to be putting those two together as if anybody could give a shit that those two people will be feuding um yeah so there's that um then you had the acclaimed versus mjf and chris jericho um it was a good match uh for what it was um but uh you did have mjf and uh and jericho picking up the win there um but what happened after the match um was actually uh led into by a backstage vignette earlier on and for some reason the uh it revolved around mjf and sammy guevara in the back and they were having a conversation and uh, yeah, it, it, it ended up that Sammy and MJF basically accused each other of trying to take over the inner circle. MJF played it up like as if he sat his phone out to record Sammy saying things out of context. But obviously, as we all know, uh, we're watching a TV show, so they're recording everything with context. So realistically, all that Jericho or anybody would need to do would be to actually watch the fucking show like Impact didn't do. <laughs> In any event, um, that led to Sammy punching MJF and throwing his phone against the wall, shattering it, uh, leading up to the uh, aftermath of this match where Sammy quits the inner circle. Mm -hmm. He quits the inner circle. He walks out and uh, of note, he exited the arena through the babyface tunnel so that was uh that was something subtle of note um and he uh they He's even showed him going through the metal detectors on the way out of the building so implying that he not just quit the inner circle but that he possibly quit aew which uh some interesting stuff went down uh this yeah. week as impact tapings happened and Sammy Guevara was actually supposed to be a part of those impact tapings. According to what was reported uh, by the Wrestling Observer, take it as oh. you will, the, uh, the creative plans were vetoed by Tony Khan and Jericho initially. Uh, they represented some creative plans to them, 
And then uh, thus Sammy went to the site of the tapings, showed up to the building, found out what the creative was going to be for that episode. And um, mm -hmm. basically said, I'm not doing this shit. And yeah, uh, Tony Khan and Chris Jericho were called. Sammy Guevara was sent home from the impact tapings. And supposedly there's some heat now between Jericho and uh, Guevara as a result. Oh, so there. <laughs> yeah, so there's that. Um, yeah, okay. We'll see what happens, but um, it looks like as if we've I mean, hit our I'm first, now, our first getting, stumble in the road. Is he like getting a big hair now? No, no. I, I just realistically, I just, I don't know if, um, I don't know if he was going to be punked out or, like if, if he actually is getting a big head, but um, it's definitely not a good sign that the first, the very first kind of angle um, where he's involved, he just says, fuck this and says, I'm not doing it. Yeah, that's, that's, hmm. okay. So, Which is that uh, because I mean, he's one of the ones that I would have said uh, definitely has a high ceiling. Oh, without question, yeah. without question. Um, I, th I think, I think he can make a lot of money as a baby face. Yes. So, um, and then as far as your main event, um, obviously I'm not going to talk about the women's match. If one of you guys want to talk about that, then that's cool. I don't, I don't. Um, but the, uh, the main event was Kenta and Kenny Omega versus John Moxley and Lance Archer falls count anywhere lights out. Yeah, this was, this was wild. This was fun. Um, this was, uh, this was good on all accords. Um, it made Lance Archer look elevated um, as he was in there with Moxley and Omega. Um, and they were hyping up Kenta throughout the entire show. So they were, they were just putting him over nonstop as well. Um, I think that all four guys came out looking like a million bucks. Um, no pun intended. Um, in the end though, Omega hit Archer with a V trigger. Um, and then he needed uh, the help of, you know, the good brothers uh, yeah. who came out and uh, he ended up getting Lance Archer up into the one wagon angel. Uh, so that was, that was kind of interesting to see Lance Archer's not a small dude. Um, he got him up there with help and dropped him down, picked up the win. And um, the only real complaint that I have about this match is that for some stupid fucking reason, midway through the match, they decided to air a recap of the first half of the match um, instead of actually sticking with it. So insert your questions here. If this was a breather spot or a water break spot or whatever the situation was, um, that kind of took me out of the flow of the match. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, it goes without saying, guys, the forbidden door is blasted wide open. AEW, New Japan, Impact, they're all working together. And you got to figure ROH is like the, the kid that got picked last or that didn't even get picked at all. So, I mean, they're just hanging out. I'd, I'd actually like to see ROH brought into this in some way, shape or form, but um, let's just, let's just progress as we, as we are right now, AEW, New Japan, Impact. I'm really excited to be a fan and see what happens from here. Yep. It's wow. almost like uh wrestling's version of the mcu it's a shared world yes and i'm excited the multiverse the multiverse i'm excited about it and the best part about it since city speed is it probably irritates mr michaels which is always christmas oh dude, quite air air irritates matt michaels oh. well, michaels michaels was just yawning is, is are you you tired brother or what no no you know it's just uh, one of those things that um it's not the product that bores me. It's the people who are fans of the product. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> Anyways, I would like an opportunity because Sin City Steve did invite someone to Go talk. Go ahead, man. Knock it out. As, as most people know, the AEW Women's Eliminator Tournament is starting, and there's two components. There's the uh, Japan side of it, and there's the U.S. side. And on AEW. Who's your favorite on the Japan side? <laughs> I haven't picked, to be honest with you. I Maki Ito. I'll tell you that right fucking now. Hey, Steve could do it off the top of his head. You couldn't. Hey, so. hey, no. The only reason why she's why she's my favorite is because when the tournament was announced and she was announced as being in the tournament, she tweeted out in all capital letters, "Hello, motherfuckers!" Hey. Instant, instant favorite right there. I want her to win for that alone. 
Nice. Outside of all of that, AEW, we got a chance to see uh, Thunder Rosa and the legit Layla Hirsch, which I had talked about her, I think, a couple of weeks, way more than a couple of weeks back when I saw her for the first time. I was like, man, she got something. She got some spunk. This little shorty piece of dynamite can explode and boom. And it was an awesome match between her and Thunder Rosa. There was a couple of things that, you know, they got disconnected a couple of times, I noticed. But outside of that, it, it was fun to watch, you know. I mean, so I'm excited. Uh, what they're trying to do with the women's division, AEW. We've talked about it for a long time, right, Sin City Steve? Oh, yeah. It's a good approach. I think it's a great approach. And I, I will agree. try to find my pick, Matt Michaels, and I will reveal my pick for the AEW Eliminator uh, title for the Japan side. I'll, I will actually do some homework and look up who I'm going to pick on that side. There you go. All right. Oh, shit. Oh, the, forward to it. The Boy. thing wasn't a challenge or anything. It was just going to the point of who fucking cares. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Speaking of who fucking cares, let's talk but about You Smackdown. know what? The, the truth oh. of the matter is, is who watches? Who watches Japanese wrestling outside of you, Steve? I will say that this got me interested to want to watch more Japanese women's wrestling, to be completely honest. More even, people fucking should. And, and even, even when we talked, when Sin City Steve talked about it two weeks ago, I started looking around, okay, so what are some ways I can incorporate this into my schedule to start watching it? So at the end of the day, it's, it's good for everybody all around. It's good for women's wrestling. It's good to bring more awareness and expand. I mean, it's a great thing. I mean, unlike yourself, that only expands two inches, I'd like to expand a little bit longer. <laughs> all right. Well, let's go jump over into the uh, SmackDown. And uh, Matt Michaels, that's all you, man. Yeah, it was good. Sorry, I'm just going to give you two inches tonight. <laughs> All right. Well, then, hey, can you give us round two of the good inches and talk about talking smack? Because your boy, uh, you, you, Paul Heyman, dropping pearls on talking smack. I mean, he sets up shit like a chess game. And I'll let you talk about it because that's your hero. Oh, yeah. I've been saying that for weeks. Um, you can You can chime in on it and say what you want to say. Um, no, I mean, what else can you say about SmackDown other than um, the fact that setting up Roman to wrestle whoever wins the Elimination Chamber <laughs> was a stroke of genius. Yeah. And it, it has that... What they were missing, the one thing they were missing was giving Roman the depth of actually having control like that. And it wasn't the usual wrestling power play. Oh, he's got the belt. He's the champion. You know, he could do this or that. No, it was done in a legit way of this is in his contract. Just brilliant. Brilliantly done. Um, Elimination Chamber. It's going to be interesting, right? I, I guess. I guess. Hey, you got uh, Kevin Owens, Jey Uso, King Corbin. You got Cesaro, Daniel Bryan. You know what? Out of that whole list that I will say, and I thought about it today, and I like what AEW has been, uh, not AEW, what WWE has been doing as of recently with uh, kind of showcasing people's uh, character arcs going into events, kind of showcasing some promo uh, packages. Um, I get Daniel Bryan going into this and what he's looking for. I get Cesaro. I get what he's going into. Jay Uso, I get that as well. King Corbin, I feel like he really needs to figure out what's a way to relate that, that, you're, that you're relevant. Uh, if I were going to write for him, I would say you need to say it like you're not getting into respect, like nobody cares about you. Sammy Zayn, I get why, what he wants out of this, you know, what he's looking for. He's looking for vindication. He's looking for people to realize, like, look, you motherfuckers have, uh, you know, uh, uh, part of the conspiracy to go against me. I say if they can't figure out what King Corbin is to get me interested or other people interested about King Corbin being part of this elimination, I say uh, have Seth Robin takes his ass out with a curb stump and take his spot. Why? Because King Corbin, it, it, he has a lot of talent. I want to see more from him. Why is he in here? Everybody has something to gain. What's King Corbin have to gain? <clears throat> So you're going to have Seth Rollins get into the match to win the match to go and then lose right to Roman Reigns the same fucking night. Genius job. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying in the spot, the people who are the participants, 
King Corbin Why has, would you have him in the match if he's not going to win it? He has to win. No, because he's trying to push a vision. He's trying to push a vision, which we saw on Friday night. And unfortunately, everybody walked away, except for Cesaro, obviously. But it, it, it's one of those things to where, again, my biggest point was, okay, what does King Corbin really have to offer? Are we going to see that this week leading up to? Does it fucking matter? You have six people in a match who yes. eventually one of them is just going to get fed to fucking Reigns. And hopefully, you know, that's your storyline moving on. But you said it, storyline. What's the storyline of King Corbin right now? Tell me. There's no need to put a oh, fuck, man, dude. You, you spotted? Dude, yeah, you earned it. Where is it? <laughs> Uh, Are you sending him to the shadow realm? Yes. <laughs> you you know what you know what happens when you did that to the other guy. <laughs> I was gonna say it's like the black hole, man. You go in, motherfuckers we, don't come back out. We haven't seen him since, so you might want to. Hey, gosh, how come you did not tell me the Matt Michaels X realm was so fucking cool? <laughs> It's filled. It's filled with everything you love, right? Fucking cool. Impact. The strippers with the poles. Yeah. Games. They was in this motherfucker. Oh, shit, man. Put me there, Michaels. I want to see this. It's shit. like Raw Underground in that bitch, except it's like DJ Impact wanted it to be. But, it, but it's. But it's. It's really. It's actually a little different for everyone. So, like Simon gets to see Drew Brees smoking a cigar with the Super Bowl trophy, but if Steve goes in. He gets Roethlisberger with the Super Bowl trophy, smoking a cigar. DJ, I guess, Carr. There you I go. Guess, I right? guess. <laughs> Whatever. You know, since See, whoever you know, your quarterback is going to be next year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whatever. That was fucking awesome. Man, how come you haven't sent me there more often? That shit was freaking nice. <laughs> it was almost a near death experience and you're enjoying yourself, and all of a sudden it said, no, you can't stay here. What the fuck? Let me ask you this. Did you guys like the, the, the banter going back between Apollo and Big E? I did like it. I thought that was good. I did like it, but the only thing that I did not like mm -hmm. is how Big E was... I didn't like how Big E kind of responded to it in a way. It was like, dude, I'm done with you. Like, that's supposed to be still your friend. Not your boy, but your friend. And you was like, I get Apollo was being an ass about it, right? But Biggie went cold shoulder on his ass real. He called him a, he called him a charity case, too. He did to go back to catering. Dude, that's like me telling Michaels, like, bruh, like, for real, man, the two inches, man, this ain't going to work with these hoes. I'm just saying. It's just like. No, I'm just saying, like, that was really, like, that whole interaction was just like, shit. Like, they. <laughs> Boy. Um, no. <laughs> If you come over to my place, I could really show you some things. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but just going back, that going back, whole, I was talking to her. That that whole interaction <laughs> um, was really good between uh, between you know, uh, them two. So, um, yeah. and you know, I kind of like to see where where this is going. You know, maybe finally they figured out something for uh, Apollo. Uh, I mean, it still won't come out with him being out on, on top, but still, it's a, st a story that seems like he he'll fit right in. So, um, so that was cool to see. Um, jumping back over to Seth, did you guys enjoy that whole how he came back and how they had everyone come into the ring in this oh, lumberjack form? <laughs> you know what was so funny? I was think I was saying when everyone was walking, I kept saying. Somebody has to stand back. There's got to be one person. There's one person got to stand. But I was hoping whoever that one person was, was, you know, was going to be a person who actually agreed with him. Um, so, but the, how they did it works too. You know, I like how Cesaro was like, uh, maybe there was something there, but not anymore. Uh, you know, but I, I like the idea they did hold somebody back. Cause I was like, yeah, that would be awesome if one person did stay. And, and it did you know it, there's there's one thing that it proves though mm -hmm. that uh Aaliyah is probably better at uh you know pleasing mr murphy's uh unit than uh, south was <laughs> i 
Because we haven't seen Buddy Murphy back on TV since he went with Aaliyah. I, I guess, but <laughs> I mean, dude, that, that's dark, bro. I have nothing to say. <laughs> that went so left. <laughs> Just like, you know what's funny about that night, though? Changing the subject, I like how they was messing with your tag team champions. We're just a couple of dirty dogs. And then when they was trying to get their spot in Elimination Chamber, uh, they were talking about, oh, you guys want to share a pod? You want to share the same pod? That's it. Right. So- yeah. We can cut holes in it and all that. Um, <laughs> yeah. But like you said, I mean, yeah, SmackDown, it, um, it definitely was a, um, you know, good show like they always do, man. Just good writing, writing in general. And smack because I really feel talking smack really. Yeah, I, I I have yet to watch that, so I it was got me hip to watching it now. Now I immediately watch it right after SmackDown. Thank you for hipping me on to it. Uh, it's so much shit just in that small amount of time. Uh, did not know Kayla Braxton was 19 years old. I feel all types of guilty. <laughs> She's not 19 years old. <laughs> oh, don't you laugh? Don't you laugh there, DJ? <laughs> Paul, Paul Heyman said she was 19 years old. I was like, I had to check on that. Like, hold on. She's yeah. a fan favorite. I won't lie. Yeah, but 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 you also were a fan of JoJo when JoJo was, and she legit was 18 when she started. So, oh, you just gonna put my, my myself out there like that to the world, man? Hey, <laughs> I took a picture of her when she was of age. Anyway, besides the point. Um, I don't want to take it away from you, Michaels, but I have to tell you. Oh, it's okay. Heyman is a genius. Like the way he sets up shit, it's like a it's like a class shop and like like I don't know, like whatever you what would you call it, Matt Michaels? Because it's it's amazing to watch. Well, it's the uh dedication to what he's saying. And there are certain people like Miz is really good at it, you know. Anything that comes out of their mouth when they're on these types of programs, right? They're, they're allowed a little bit of freedom to make it a little more of a shoot feel to things. Um, and so they use shoot ideas, you know, that's, that's the easiest way to achieve that balance is that, you have two people and you know if you have a little heat with each other then you explore that you know knowing that you know again listen it goes all the way back to brett and sean the you know there was an understanding there that um you know sean was going to say some nasty things to brett and then brett was going to say nasty things to sean and then sean was going to say it back and brett was going to get pissed off like usual and you know, then realize that, you know, his ego was so fragile. Paul Heyman is a genius. He fucking is. I mean, he, he even made it like when Daniel Bryan came in. I mean, obviously, Cesaro was struggling to kind of, you know, uh, uh, bait that one. But once, uh, you know, Daniel Bryan came back in, he presented the same question. Same thing he did with Sasha Banks. You know, uh, uh, he's done that countless times saying like, hey, you know, Bianca Belair is good, but basically told her, like, you got to be that, uh, that, that, that conniving Sasha Banks to get that win. And, and, and I like how Sasha finished it. She said, well, she's got to pick me first and then left. I was like, whoo, hey, good bumps on that shit. So, I mean, again, facilitated by yours truly, uh, Paul Heyman, he should win a slammy. Well, you never know, man. He may actually do that. I mean, he he gonna go to the Hall of Fame. I, I'm petitioning if they don't put him in it, but he will go to the Hall of Fame easily, <clears throat> without question. He'll be there. Well, I mean, outside of mm-hmm. yep, Chris Benoit, uh, I think that will probably be you know the the headlining class. <laughs> do you put Paul Heyman with Chris Benoit to be in the Hall of Fame? <laughs> yeah, two ECW guys, you know. I mean, my thing is like this. If you can get Chris Benoit in the Hall of Fame, that'll be some, that, that's like a multiverse of madness, like a whole different dimension he gets in the Hall of Fame. I well, think they, what's the next time they do WrestleMania in Canada? 
Mm, well, that'll be never. <laughs> I don't know. That, that's never happened. Is it? WrestleMania or- Maple Leaf. Yeah, Toronto, if you're listening, they plan to put Chris Benoit into the Hall of Fame the year you want to host it. <laughs> oh, man. You know, we'll speak- go right, Impact? We'll go. Speaking of mania, uh, is it weird that they haven't uh, star selling uh, seats yet? No. No? Okay. Because they're going to because they they're gonna have to they're going to have to go through all sorts of logistical simulations just yeah. to get as many people in there as they can without um, endangering those same people, making sure distancing, all that kind of happy horse right. shit happens. So, but they, yeah. I'm just saying, like they you they wouldn't already have had that planned out. No, no, just as, so to think about you, you, you act like as if they plan things out, they don't. <laughs> well, well they, too, guys, they fly by the seat of their ass with their booking, yeah, 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 I guess which so. is a microcosm of their business model. And don't forget, too, that anything that you have in place now could very well be changed Bingo. within a month, yep. so you don't want to do too much of that. And I would assume that. A lot of their, um, I think a lot of their tickets are going to be uh, like first responders, yeah, as well. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, like that. I could see them doing basically what the Super Bowl did. Yeah, um, like what the NFL did with for the Super Bowl. Got you. That would make sense. Question, guys, because this is something that I brought up before, and I, I have a feeling the trend's going to go there. It's going to be incentive program for people to vaccinate. And eventually having that could be a wrestle, maybe, maybe not this one because it's too soon coming up, but for next one, which is Dallas, right? Have your paperwork showing that you've been vaccinated. Do you think that's something that might be a reality, not just for WWE, but for other events? Like if you want to go to an event like that, you have to show your vaccination uh, paperwork. And I'm, of course, everybody would still have masks on and stuff like that. But do you see that for the future? No. No, because... You- Vaccination, vaccination, or proof of a negative COVID test within 72 hours of the event, I could see. Yeah, um, I could see not, but again, that I legitimately think that there are lines to be crossed where you know they're mandating vaccines. Um, I, I would not. I, you know, I, I don't see a problem with them throwing in the stipulation of being able to verify a negative COVID test within the. the you know, within a 72 hour window of the event. Well, and, and, and I agree with you on that one. I'm, 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 I'm not a big fan of mandating any type of thing because what people believe in is what they believe in. But I will tell you this, I'm getting my uh, <clears throat> secondary shot this Saturday. Now what that does entitle me is if I wanna be around someone that has a positive COVID, A, I no longer have to quarantine for two weeks. So I could be at a WrestleMania with people even if they had a positive or a negative, I'm saying in that situation. So, I mean, could it be some type of thing to where they put some kind of a? I so you see. stretch. You basically stretch this around just to be like, "Hey, I've got my second shot. I can go do anything. Fuck the rest of you guys. <laughs> nice job, dude." <laughs> Damn, but hear me out. Hear me out. What I am trying to say is the logistics of if you're vaccinated, you can be with the population of people who have a positive COVID. Is what I'm saying. So there's something just with that scenario that's workable. Which- I'm just- you got you to remember a couple things. You're just we're just going off of the assumption that that is the actual case. We we we're at a point where people are just starting to get vaccinated. You don't have enough of a population yet to you know d- think about. You have a huge stadium. It's going to take a while for things to get acclimated, and then you're you're fighting variants. So the my biggest thing is this. You can't have people showing that they've been vaccinated to get into an event. The 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 first you're pushing it even with showing a negative test within 72 hours. That's even tougher. On top of that, now you're talking about the people at the door have to then take that information yeah, yeah that's <laughs> that's going to be the clusterfuck yeah <laughs> and i'm glad you said that because one of the things that people have been instructed to do if you're taking vaccinations don't be the idiot on social media showing your vaccination information because that's very important information so it's interesting you said that 
Yeah. There's a lot to consider. Only reason why I brought that up is because that's a variant. You have variants of, you know, are, are, is everybody going to be able to even have an opportunity if they want to take a shot? And the reason why I brought that up is because we all know WWE, they saw what the Super Bowl numbers was like. I know that they're trying to figure out in their head what's a way we can get more numbers, but still stay safe or whatever. I know they're going to be thinking about that probably well up into the event. They will be, but but also you got to take into consideration again a lot of those people in Super Bowl, the first responders. Well, that's that's part of it, but also a lot of the Super Bowl tickets are always purchased through companies. Yeah, it's not the same thing, and that's we can perceive the Super Bowl all we want, but it's its own animal. Um, I know that you are not walking up to the box office of the super bowl and finding a scalper you know because you're not going to get the tickets to get in anyway so if you're going through a scalper or going through a uh you know a secondhand resale it, it's going to cost you fucking an arm and a leg and the the truth of the matter is is that they're going to you know try to put in as many people safely as they can um but what I think they're going to, if they're smart, what they'll end up doing is basically making it kind of Thunderdome-ish and either put, you know, put screens up, bigger screens up, you know, higher up so that it's kind of more of an enclosed feel. Mm-hmm. It's going to be different than anything we're ever, you know, going to be used to, I think, for at least the first one. Yeah. That's in a stadium again. But it would definitely be all eyes because I know me and Impact were, you know, briefly discussing it, but uh, I'm down to go to Dallas next year. So, uh, and I'm planning to go. I'm just yeah. kidding. See the, what only, the, the only downside about Dallas is that you have to go to Dallas. Well, Dallas ain't too bad if you got to eat. <laughs> if you got to eat, I ain't got a problem with Dallas. But yeah, outside of that, you know, I'd have been to Dallas like four or five times in the last three years. But I don't mind going to WrestleMania. I don't. I don't know. I've heard horror stories about the parking in that Dallas stadium. I hope they've improved that. But I don't know. I've heard horror stories about their football team in that stadium. <laughs> All right, check this out. Uh, we don't have anything from New uh, New Japan, but uh, ROH. They of course did their regular matches. They did a. Um, they did two. One of them was Tony Deppin versus LSG. That was a really good match that they put on. LSG was the the winner of that particular match, and um, and then the foundation, I guess, because last week uh, the, on this eight on eight tag team match that ended in just such disarray that it pissed off the foundation because of course their whole their whole sort of um, idea of the foundation is keeping. ROH where, you know, you're supposed to get along. Yes, you have your matches, but you don't tear the business down. So you're not throwing chairs and throwing tables. You know, you're not messing up the joint per se. You know, you just have your match. You lost, you shake your hands, you go back. So when they saw what that eight-man tag team did this week, they said, well, this week, we're going to show you the way it's supposed to be done. So they actually split the foundation up and added a couple of members. So they had Jonathan Grisham and Tracy Williams and Fred Ye- uh, Yehi against Jay Leto, Rhett Titus, and Willer, Willer Yata, I think that's his name. Um, and they had that match. So again, you have s- certain members of the group that were going against each other, and they had their match. I mean, it, it was pretty good. I think it almost ran the entire half an hour most of their matches are within 15 minutes or so uh this one was a little longer but you know they did exactly what they were trying to you know say and that is after you lose that match you know you you go gracefully um really if again that really was a good match but you know i I, i'm still trying to figure out the the whole foundation um i i get what they're trying to do um, I'm just trying to see at what point does this sort of gimmick or their persona just fall apart. And right now it's not, you know, they're just keeping it where they're really trying to keep ROH like this, this strong 
uh, wrestling business. So nevertheless, it was still a good match. That's that was not, and that was the final um, main event. And Jay Lethal won that one. Jay Lethal, Red Titus, and Willer. Um, so that was ROH. Um, uh, yeah, and that was it. So with that, there's uh, I think we covered all of wrestling guys. We even went a little bit over time. The producer's been uh, yelling at my ear, but I said, hey, Simon Street wanted to talk about Gosh. You know, vaccinations and put that on me and COVID. So he 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 said, "All right, well, that seems to be important information. I won't yell at you anymore." So well, thank sweet. you. Sometimes you got you just you just got to call a beaver a beaver, bro. <laughs> I guess so. Shit. You know, and I didn't even get to use this a lot. You're an idiot. Okay, but it's there. Why? Um, hey, with that though, guys, let's say our uh, final thoughts because we're not going to have a three count tonight and i know some folks are going oh no no three count don't worry it'll be back we're just not gonna have it tonight um so final thoughts uh, let's go with you simon street what you want to tell the people out there uh everybody uh you know um today was a very special day for a lot of couples and um i really hope that um men and women found time to spend time together and celebrate valentine's day because if you didn't um the worst day for uh high percentage breakup couples is the following day after Valentine's Day. A lot of people don't get signed because they didn't put in effort. And uh, there's still time. Uh, you know, make that special someone just as much special. Okay. There you go. Um, just a reminder, we released our Valentine's uh, special today as well. So if you got a chance to hear it, hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have it, download it and take a listen. I think you would, uh, you would, Take the questions we asked and you will, you will be able to answer it yourself. Sin City Steve, what you want to tell the people? Well, happy Singles Awareness Day. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, nonetheless, uh, thank you to everybody who hung out with us tonight in the chat. Thank you for everybody for liking our posts, sharing our posts, and uh, just building this community. Uh, we, we're building something great. And each and every single person that's hearing my voice right now you are a part of it. So thank you very much. Um, special shout out to all of the brave men and women serving this country on both lands, foreign and domestic. Thank you for doing what you do. We wouldn't be able to do this without you. So thank you. And also last but not least, repsports.com, repsports.com. That is where you're going to go for all of your pre-workout, your weight loss and your energy drink needs, repsports.com. So, uh, promo code Vegas at checkout. Save yourself 15%. Awesome. All right, man, Michaels, what you got? So for those of you out there, for those of you out there who think that Alexa Bliss or um, Sonia Deville or Mandy or Scarlett are your wives or girlfriends stop it just fucking stop it man this is you know it's just fucked up and um you put in people who are people in really bad positions you know um should never have to go out there and entertain people and then be repaid by having fans try to intimidate uh, you or whoever you're with, whoever your partner is. It's just not right. And please fucking stop it. Because it's, man, dude, it mm, you just can't be that type of crazy, man. Especially nowadays. Or you'll end up like Simon Street. <laughs> Please. What I do is in taste and re respect. Sorry, Sasha. <laughs> what? <laughs> Did that really happen to those people? Because I'm like, damn, what the hell happened? I, 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 yeah, you haven't, you haven't heard about Alexa Bliss? Well, I didn't hear about it, but I know some stuff happened with Sonya Deville with that crazy motherfucker. Well, he broke he broke into the house when her and Mandy were there. But um, no, uh, the, there is a person on uh, the uh, World Wide Web who has been 
saying that uh, Alexa Bliss is his wife, uh, his partner, whatever, and that uh, Ryan Cabrera, her fiance, uh, basically um, is going to die. And uh, when uh, this guy gets to Tampa or Orlando or wherever the hell he's going to do this, um, you know, it's it's on her uh being with him that is bringing on this whole thing in this guy's mind uh apparently it, it's awful dude look it up it's just fucking wackadoodle and man yeah. the cops you just hope that the cops uh that everything is on high alert um for this person because uh whew, you know that's that too there's no respect. I mean, if, if, if you if that person really respect Alexa Bliss and really was a fan, why would you want? Well, they're not a they're not a fan, yeah, obviously. But I'm just saying, you know, they're crazy. Yeah, yeah, that's sad. That's really sad. I, that's my first time hearing that, but I'm I'm not shocked. And that um, hopefully, the street in Sasha Banks is not a real thing at all. I have a little TV crush, but I would never want to see her un, unhappy or outside of who she is and that's what normal people do if they have a crush on somebody weird people is the dude that you mentioned matt, matt michael that's some weird shit well it's just comes down to this fact instead of looking at it through that perspective it's looking at it through the perspective of no the only way she'll be happy is if she's with me and you know we can we can say all these things about people who do this as celebrities but think about if you've ever been in a situation where your boyfriend or girlfriend says to you, um, hey, you'll never be happy without me. I actually have been in that situation. And after I broke up with her, she wrote letters to my mother, my father, my sister, and um, you know, was saying, hey, I'm going to be with him. And uh, it, it was weird. It was a little scary. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So there you go. Well, folks, we, you know, we got to stay safe out there and, 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 you know, for, I'm, I know it's tough out there for a lot of the women because this is the type of shit they have to go through. I mean, and this is just happens to be famous people we know. I mean, women who, ordinary women who just live their lives have to deal with this shit too, you know, so just do your best as you can to, uh, to, to just, you know, to stay safe and, and, um, you know, and you just got to keep going, you know, can't let fear stop you either, but you know, you, you got to make sure you stay alert as well. And, um, you know, we just move from there. Uh, with that, everyone, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out with us. We will, um, we will have more programming this week as usual, and we will see you all uh, next week as well. So with that, take care and peace out.